Good morning, it is my honour and my privilege to share the word of God with you this morning. I hope that you've got an open heart and open ears to hear what God has for us this morning. I'm excited by the word that he has placed upon my heart. So let's take a moment to pray and give this word to God this morning. Father God, we ask that you would open our hearts and open our ears to what you have to say to us this morning. Lord, would you raise our faith levels this morning as we listen to the word that you have for us. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that it's full of promise, that it's full of goodness, that it's full of love, hope and mercy for us. Lord, we thank you that these aren't empty promises and Lord we thank you that they're not promises in a sense that we can contain in the worlds that we live in but Lord we thank you that they are promises for our lives and hopes for our lives that are beyond our understanding and beyond a measure that we can measure here on this earth that is of an eternal um measure lord that we thank you that you are a good god that you have left your word for us to build us up to encourage us and to most of all build our faith in you that you are a god of the impossible and lord as we look into your word this morning lord would we not feel that we are any way inadequate to what you ask of us but lord would you raise our faith to believe that you have created us to be people and carriers of your word that you have a plan for our lives that it goes beyond our understanding more than we could ever think or imagine Lord, would you raise our faith levels in the rooms that we are sat in right now? In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. So, I want to start off this morning by showing you a picture. Hopefully the picture will come on the screen um, to you now. And this picture is a picture that I use quite a lot in my schoolwork that um, as I'm planning assemblies and worship at school, I often come back to this picture. I think it's a powerful picture for the moment that we live in right now. In this picture, it's taken at a, a film festival a few years ago. And we can see the busyness of this picture, that pe people look excited, um, that they're obviously um, in anticipation of who's going to arrive, um, what celebrities and famous people they might see, that they might be able to capture on their devices. And you can see all through this picture that everyone in that picture has got a device or a camera to capture that moment that they are living in. But as we look closer at this picture, we see one individual who does not have a device in her hand. She doesn't have a camera in her hand to capture that moment. She is stood there amongst all these other people, but she is giving this moment her full attention. She is giving this moment the time that it deserves not to feel distracted by trying to capture it on a device or a or a camera not feeling like she needs to capture it to take it away to remember it but she is living in the moment and i often use it at school as this um example that sometimes we can get distracted by um the life around us because we are so busy on our technologies these days on screens um, and this picture is a great demonstration that actually sometimes we need to lift up our view, widen our view, to really take in the moment, to take in what is going on. And this picture captures it beautifully. I think we are all sometimes victims of the this moment i know i am with two small children and being so aware of them growing so quickly i want to capture um, moments of them so often on my phone or video them on, on a camera and i 
I sometimes then forget while I'm doing that, I'm distracted from getting involved with them and playing with them and joining in with them in the fun because I just want to capture the moment that they're in when I could be part of that moment. I could lift my view. I could widen my view and be part of that moment. And this led me on in um, to thinking of the story that we see where um, in Luke 19, where we see the story of Zacchaeus, someone that had to climb a tree to widen his view, to um, look up and to see what was going on. And we read um, the account of his story in um, Luke 19, 1 to 10. So let's just read that now together. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector. He was rich and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And then Jesus came to a place and he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they were complaining, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. We see in this moment that we know so well, maybe many of us perhaps sang a song about Zacchaeus if we grew up in Sunday school. And we see again from Jesus a constant challenge to us to widen our view, to look up and to take notice we see in this story a picture of life a moment of crowds of busyness and restricted view life today can get like that maybe more now than ever as we begin to get back to what normal looks like may be mindful to take some of the lessons that we've learned from lockdown with us to not fill our lives with our direct view but to broaden our view more as i've pondered this story over the last few weeks i have been captured by that beautiful moment that when we see jesus widen his view from the crowd and look up at zacchaeus We don't have to climb a tree to see the truth. We all want to see things that are going on around us. We check our social media regularly to see what maybe we've missed. We slow down and investigate when we see a crowd. Our nature as humans is to wonder what people are looking at or talking about 
and to get involved ourselves. This is the setting as Jesus walked through Jericho. People were flocking around Jesus and like any of us, Zacchaeus wanted to look at what was going on. How shocking it must have been when Jesus spoke to him directly. To Zacchaeus in the midst of that large crowd. Jesus wasn't focused on his direct view around him, the crowd around him. But he took a moment to widen his view. To look up and see Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was not a tall man. He had to climb a tree to see Jesus. Yet, in a certain respect, Zacchaeus already knew who Jesus was. That he was worth climbing the tree for. That he was worth seeing. We too, through the word of God, have full access to the complete truth of who Jesus is. We tend to look high and low for every secret to life. We may be afraid of missing out on something. We may search through self-help books to, to find the answer or look for a hidden message or seek out purpose and meaning in the wrong places. But there is no need for us to go to extraordinary measures to find a truth that is written down for us in every page of scripture. Jesus was the full human representation of truth. And we need look no further than him. Jesus Christ, the son of God, fully man but fully God, the full representation of truth. We can be made pure. The meaning of Zacchaeus's name is pure or innocent. As a tax collector, Zacchaeus didn't live up to his name. It was no secret that his wealth was gained from the backs of his neighbours and countrymen. Yet John the Baptist tells us earlier within the New Testament, he says that tax collectors can make things right by simply being honest in their business. Zacchaeus does this after encountering Jesus and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore to them fourfold. After Jesus reached out to him, Zacchaeus changed his ways. And when he went above and beyond to make things right. He finally overcame the past and lived up to his name. The scripture ends with these words, today salvation has come to this house. The word salvation has many meanings and in Strong's Concordance, it says these words, deliverance, soundness, prosperity, happiness, general well-being. In the New Testament, its use of salvation uses a spiritual well-being with a fuller realisation in the future. In some translations of the Bible, it replaces the word salvation with the word life. Life has come to this house. When we live a life with Jesus, we know life to the full. Jesus himself is life. I am the way, the truth and the life. Jesus had gone to Zacchaeus' house. Salvation has come to this house. Life has come to this house. Jesus has come to this house. Living a life with Jesus is having life and life to the full. It enables us not to live restricted, but it lives a life that gives gives us life, gives us hope, gives us love beyond all measure. 
And my second point here this morning is that we need to widen, to notice and to widen our viewpoint, to widen our lens, perhaps. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 to 13 in the message translation we read these words dear dear Corinthians I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open spacious life we didn't fence you in the smallest you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can, with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. We are just coming out of a time physically where we have felt very small and closed in. Maybe we have felt our world has been very limited and restricted. There will, there will be times when we feel oppressed by situations around us. It's in these moments that we have to remember that we are called to live a life that is open and expansive. How do we do that? Not by the circumstances changing, but by seeing the breadth, the depth and the length of the God that we serve. Believing that we serve a God of the impossible. Believing that we serve a God who is able to do more than we can ever think, ask or imagine. Our home here on earth is restricted. But our eternal home is without measure. When we live by what is happening in front of us, we miss the acres of space that God has made available to us. I speak so often about the power of words and I truly believe that the words that we listen to, the words that we speak, we have to be so careful and so mindful of what we are letting in our ears and in our mind. Our minds are powerful things and we have to be careful and choose the voices that we allow to influence us. Be careful of the opinions that restrict you. The dream killers, the hope stealers, the reality check conversations that leave no room for the miraculous to be manifested in you and through you. I know I come back to this every time I preach, but I can't say it enough. The God gave you his word. For this very purpose that we don't listen to those opinions that may restrict us. We don't listen to those hope killers. We don't listen to those dream stealers. But we listen to the word of God. It's a blueprint of the vast life that he has for you and for me. So when life tries to give you a map, you have a blueprint from the creator of the universe. He has called you to live in wide open spaces. Your smallness has to surrender to his vastness. The vastness of the promises, of the dreams, of the visions, of the hopes that he has in store for you. We have to live with wide open view. Because God 
has called us to live in wide open spaces. In Romans 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 2, in the message translation, it says, We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. God's view is a wide angle. If your view is narrow or restricted, then listen to this more in the word of God in Ephesians 3, 14 um, to 13. In the message translation, it says these words. My response is to get down on my knee before the father, the magnificent father who parcels out all of heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit. Not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love reach out, experience the breadth, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. If that truth doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. It says people listen. You have a God you serve, a God you are held by, a God this whole world is held by, a God that has no end to his love. You cannot measure his grace, mercy. It is so deep. It is so wide and it is so long. Me and Mark have been watching um, a programme on Channel 2, BBC 2. And um, we were a bit late to this programme. Someone had talked about it to us and we thought, oh, we'll watch it. And then we, um, it's on like Series 3 already. And um, so we watched the first one in Series 3 and we were like, this is really good. So we went back and we've now watching through Series 1 and 2 and 3. And it's called um, Your Home Made Perfect or something like that. And the idea of it is it's a home makeover show, but it's a bit different because it's these architects, two architects plan um, redesigning these people's houses that maybe just don't work for them anymore. Like the spaces they need um, don't work for them. Uh, maybe certain rooms are too small. The layout is out of date and it needs... Um, just a bit of modernising. And the difference with this programme is that they use um, new technology of um, VCR, um, like goggles or whatever they're called, like headsets that they put on and like puts them into um, the architect's designs. And it's quite amazing. And so these people, rather than looking at it on a piece of paper, basically go in to what their house will look like this house that maybe they once felt was restricting them from living the life that maybe they want to live in their homes um and the things that they do just by moving walls or opening spaces or putting lots of windows in rather than um and bringing sort of the outside in it's quite amazing and watching um their reaction um to all the 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 house that they know changing and becoming this new open space um, for them to live in. Some of them get um, overwhelmed, quite emotional. And um, so we've been watching that. And as I was preparing this sermon, it made me really think of that. Because sometimes 
too much we live a life that we think well this is where God called me to be this is where I am and yes Dorchester might be where you are the storehouse might be where you are but you are not restricted by the fact that you may be in a church of um, 30 40 people just because you're not in a church of hundreds that might come with more um, experience or a greater opportunity that does not restrict us we need to almost put on take off those views that are restricting us and allow God to put on us um, his viewpoint his wide open lenses for us to see his goggles for us to see the wide open spaces that he has planned for us so he has not just restricted us to the smallness but he has a vast expanse for us when life is pushing you perhaps it is time to widen your viewpoint perhaps it is time just like Jabez perhaps we need to pray some more prayers like Jabez the opposite of Zacchaeus he had to turn his back on the meaning of his name and not let it define him his name meant pain and we read about Jabez in 1 Chronicles and Jabez wasn't satisfied with the insults and the hard times so he chose to cry out to God to the one who is endless to enlarge his life these people on this program aren't satisfied with the homes any longer that they are living in and so they want to experience a new view of what their home can look like and yet we have that opportunity in God that we can come to him and say God I don't want this smallness to define me any longer I don't want this name to define me just like Zacchaeus I don't want this shortness or smallness or name of a tax collector to define me I don't want this pain to define me but Lord would you widen my viewpoint would you broaden my viewpoint would you would you push back the things that restrict me and make a way in 1 chronicles 4 10 in the niv we read jabez cried out to god of israel oh that you would bless me and enlarge my territory let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Perhaps sometimes you settle too easily. You take average over excellence. Jabez could have done that. He could have said, this is my lot in life my name means pain that defines me pain defines me but instead he said why stay here when i could have a much better life enlarge my territory widen my viewpoint enable me to live in those wide open spaces that you have for me god so as we come to the end here this morning my first point today was to notice, take notice today that the area of life, of struggle, pain, shame, loneliness, apathy, you don't have to stay in. Just like Zacchaeus, change your viewpoint that life will come to your house today. Jesus has seen you. He knows you by name. He is life. And maybe you need to reposition yourself to see the fullness of all he has for you. If someone gave you an acre of land, why would you only live in one corner? Go 
and explore the whole land that God has already told us about. The wide open spaces that he has for us. Just as Jabez, just like Jabez, ask God to increase your territory. That he will delight in enlarging your possibilities. We serve a God who is able to do more than we can ever ask or imagine. We just have to have the faith to ask. The faith to say, God, widen my viewpoint. Take me out of these restrictions. Lift my eyes. Enable me to take notice. To notice and to widen our view. Let us come to God now and ask those things of him. Perhaps you need this morning life to come to your house perhaps you don't know Jesus perhaps you don't know that he can be life in you that Jesus Christ made a way for us where there seemed to be no way and he has a life planned for you that you could never think to ask or imagine for step into the fullness of everything that God has for you maybe salvation and life needs to come to your house today and Jesus is here and he wants to be your friend Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life And he can be the way for you this morning. He can be the truth for you this morning. He can be the life for you this morning. So if you want to know more about Jesus and everything he can be, please email us at um, prayer.thestorehouse at gmail.com and we can send you some information about how to pray a prayer to invite Jesus to be life in you today and you will start a life that will no longer be restricted but will have wide open spaces perhaps you know Jesus here this morning and you want to open those wide open spaces up perhaps you don't want to live in the smallness or be restricted anymore But you want to have the faith to ask God to widen your viewpoint to all that he has on offer for you this morning. Perhaps you simply just want to ask God, just like Jabez, that things won't define you. That you would have the faith to believe above words or names that are spoken over you to increase your territory, to enlarge your territory, to enlarge your life, that God could do endless things for you. So let's pray now together. Father God, we ask that you would come into our rooms where we are, that you would increase our faith, our expectation of everything that you can be in us and through us. Lord, that we would just give time now to that faith to be increased. That we would have the faith like Jabez to pray those prayers, to ask to not be defined by to man by man or be defined by the restrictions that people may place on us be restricted by our viewpoint and our opinions of ourselves be restricted by our situation of of pain of sickness of depression but lord that you would enlarge our territory that you would widen our viewpoint that we would be able to live not just in the corner of an area but we would be able to live in those wide open spaces that you have for us 
Would you give us ears to hear what you are asking of us this morning, that we would live in these wide open spaces for you? In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. As I said, if you want to know more about anything that we've talked about this morning, please contact us on our Facebook page or email us. Um, we'd love to tell you more. We'd love to put resources in your hand um, for you to know more about the life that you can live in and through God. We're um, going to just finish this time together by listening to a song to allow us to come before God in worship and reflection and ask him to to plant these words in us to build faith within us that we would live in the wide open spaces that he has for us thank you Lord Jesus through trial.